is based out of Clearwater, Florida. So the gentlemen that are going to be helping me provide this demonstration today here are Stephen Frazier and Jerry DeHolster. Um, this is a process where we can actually do a sectional repair in a city main line so that if you've got just a damaged or deteriorated section, whether it's a joint or you've got a service lateral you want to uh, stop infiltration on or cut off, we can actually go in without utilizing bypass pumping and just reline a section of that pipeline, whether it's two foot up to 30 foot in length. Now, <clears throat> prior to any lining, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna clean that pipeline. So we use primarily high pressure water jetting to come in through that pipeline, remove any debris. Now if you've got, say, root mass debris, we don't care about the little hair-like roots, but anything that is gonna be like a knuckle or a mass in that pipeline, we're gonna run and remove. You are working with a soft belt liner material, and it's gonna take the shape of anything that's in that pipeline. Uh, you do wanna remove any grease, or debris that's in the pipeline as well. Now once we've gone through that process, removed any debris in the pipeline, we're gonna go through and take a hard measurement utilizing a mainline tractor camera system. So we'll actually drop that in the manhole, take it to our damaged area, and we're gonna take a hard measurement off our camera cable. And your typical diameters for city mainlines, your six, eight, 10, 12, you'll notice that we can completely eliminate any manhole entry equipment with, with this process. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, once we've taken our hard measurement, we're gonna use either our jetter or a camera to string our line with, a, with our rope reel. Here we're using the 5 8 and polypropylene rope. So we're gonna have that, that rope strung throughout the line. We're gonna transfer the mark from our camera cable to from the center of a packer to our rope reel. Now this is gonna be our packer. Our packer is gonna be our inflatable device that's gonna hold that sectional repair up against the pipe wall while it cures. Now these packers are designed as multi-size packers. The one we're showing here today is for eight inch and 10 inch. We do have them from 12 to 16, 18 to 24 and so on. They're also incorpor incorporate a flow through. What this is gonna do is alleviate any upstream head pressure from the, from the uh, upstream, allowing us to eliminate the necessity for bypass pumping, which is gonna save us a great deal of time. Now the first material that we place over this packer is what we're gonna call our carrier protector or back packer protector. This is gonna be a nylon reinforced PU coated material that only expands to a fixed diameter. This is really important because these are multi-sized bladders. The multi-sized bladder being able to overexpand. If we were just to use a wrap material, and you've got, say, a bitch bike clay pipe and wash out behind it, as it overexpands, we can actually blow that pipe apart. Um, this is gonna be also a barrier level in between our resin and our, our porous packer, because the packers are rubber. Here today, we're using a 100% solids epoxy resin. We also can utilize a sodium silicate-based resin, depending on, on what, uh, what type of cure time we want to get. Both resins have no VOCs or volatile organic compounds. You can tell there's no alarming odor. Um, they, they can also be ambient cured, or we can incorporate steam if we want to get that, that uh, cure time down a little bit quicker. Now, once we've got our carrier protector on our bladder, what we're going to do is we're going to take a center mark. And basically, we're, the, we're just taking the length of the packer, placing a mark on the center, and we're going to place the marks where we're going to put our kit on. Now, this all comes in a kit format. Like I talked about, we don't want over expansion. The first, first uh, material we're going to place on is going to be our inner tubular material. The reason we use an inner tubular material is, once again, to stop that over expansion, which is really good if we're missing sections of pipe. We don't want our, our materials to balloon out in that, in that area. This is gonna be a polyurethane coated needle punch felt liner material. What we're gonna do is place this on our, on our inflatable packer, and we're gonna adhere it with low pressure zip ties. These are not the zip ties you pick up at Home Depot. They're designed to, to pop at a very specific uh, PSI, and once they're incorporated with the kit curing, you'll never even see them once they've cured. Now, to, to help 
gain added strength, and these are very, very strong sectional repairs. We over double the ASTM specification for cured in place pipeline. We use a fiberglass belt mat that you can see that Jerry is wetting out here now. This is going to be a visual wet out process. So he's looking for his even saturation throughout. The reason we incorporate a needle punch felt backing is because fiberglass does not absorb epoxy or any resin. So we want that, that needle punch felt to actually be the, the carrier of the epoxy, but the fiberglass is going to be cured within that repair and make a very, very strong repair. So once he has wet this out, they're going to hand wet out their needle punch felt here, and they're going to wrap this like a burrito. Now, if you, you can see on his packer, he's got additional marks here. Now, this is a, typically going to be a three, three mil sectional repair. And if we were to do, say, an eight inch by four foot repair, our typical kit is actually going to be eight inch or four foot six inches. The fiberglass belt is going to be three inches longer on each side. The reason we do this is so that you can taper that down. So as the, the packer inflates, Packer's going to take the path of least resistance, so it's going to inflate up from the center on down. We would get a resin migration at the end. So to get a nice, smooth edge, we're going to basically have that extra three inches on each side of needle punch felt, and that's going to give you an, a nice edge that won't leave any abrupt lip, nothing for anything from the upstream side to hang up on, or when you send your tractor across it, you know, have like a, basically a speed bump. Um, here you can see, you'll notice a difference in the 100% solids epoxy just in the coloration as opposed to the sample I was showing you here. This is going to be our typical sodium silicate based res resin, which gives you a little bit of a faster cure time, especially in extreme environments. Uh, I believe they're curing them up in Maine right now in an hour and a half ambiently with no external heat source. So once, once Stephen has basically got this wet out, and like I said, it's a visual wet out process. You can see that felt saturate. They're gonna wrap this up, and uh, once again, apply those low pressure zip ties, basically cutting off any excess of a zip tie. What you don't want to happen is a zip tie to pop and then re-catch. So you wanna make sure they pop, plus it, it's just more material on the pipe that could, could uh, show through the repair. As you notice, if you guys get an opportunity once we're done with this, if you come look at this repair, you notice that you don't see any of those zip ties in there. They actually become one with the repair. So once they've got this all zip tied up, they're basically going to attach it to their rope end. Now these packers are equipped with wheels also, so if you have any abrupt lips on the pipe to help coerce it over the bend, They'll pull it in place and air it up. Now you can see as he lifts this packer how flexible it is. I talked about eliminating the need for, for manhole entry equipment, so you don't need your tripod, your snipper, your blower. There's no reason on a point repair up to you know, your typical 12, 15 inch repair for any man entry. We can drop these directly down in the manhole with the man pulling downstream and pull them in place very easily. Now, us using that extra three inches on each side as well makes these very easy for us to overlap. And typically when we overlap them, you can't even tell that it is not one single repair to the naked eye. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Now, these all come in kit format. So basically, if you needed to do a repair, your, your resins, whether it's sodium silicate or your epoxy, you basically you're going to pour one into the other. It comes with everything from your, your carrier protector to your inner tubular material, all of your instruction specifications, material safety data sheets, your zip ties, ground protection, pretty much everything that you could need for that repair is going to be incorporated in the single kit format. These are pretty much made to order and produced on a day-to-day -day basis. If, if you call me up and say, Traps, I need 20 8x4 repair kits. If it's early enough in the day, we can either manufacture them at our facility in Clearwater, Florida, or we, got, we can manufacture them at our facility in Orange County, California, and get them out to you rather quickly. Um, a typical 
contractors that are using these types of repairs go from anywhere from the municipalities themselves, where they already have the cleaning and televising equipment, to you know your independent municipal contractors. Uh, we even have engineering firms that actually utilize these products when they when they do an engineer spec for uh, a homeowner, or not a homeowner, typically a, uh, a municipality. The engineers actually put these in the ground as well. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. So you can see once again, like how easily. That, pl that packer bends, and this is what's going to stop you from using that man entry, which is going to uh, eliminate the, the possibility of someone getting hurt, the problems with OSHA. Now, some of the problems that you can fix with this, we can completely uh, cut off infiltration as well as exfiltration. We can bridge missing sections of pipe. We can close off, you know, service laterals that aren't needed anymore. We actually have a municipality based out of Colorado that if you do not pay your water bill, they're responsible for the taps on your sewer. They will put a section of repair over your sewage line until you pay their water bill. And then they will come back with a cutter and reinstate those. So they're used for, for uh, all types of, of applications. Now we can manufacture these to a thicker diameter or thicker mill thickness if needed. If there was say, uh, an application where you add them under railroad tracks or stuff to that extent. We can go 4.5 mil, 6 mil, and even 8 mil. We run basically a cured in place design spec specification on those that uh, meets all the requirements of the ASTM F12 16 specification. Okay, as he inflates, you're going to hear the pop, 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 pop. That's just going to be your zip ties popping. Now you notice as, as he does this, he's not going to get over expansion because we use that inner tubular material as well as our inner, inner uh, our, excuse me, our, bear, our packer protection area that had that reinforced fiberglass region. And at this point, he's going to ambiently let this cure for a period of three hours. If it was sodium silicate, he'd wait about an hour and a half. And once it's cured, we're gonna just deflate and pull back out. Now, one thing I didn't touch on is you're adding heat and pressure, okay? So you can get a mechanical bond in there. When they put this packer protector on, we only adhered it to the leading edge. That's gonna be the edge we pull in from. The reason we do that is once it's cured, we can pull this back out, re-inverting it like you would pull up your socks. If you uh, try to just pull it out sometimes, you get that mechanical bond, these come out very, very easy. A quick snap, and, and you know, you can pull them out with one hand, just walk down the street, and your repair is done. For the post video, uh, you know, inspection, you're just gonna use basically uh, a visual inspection, and uh, you're left with a, a nice repair. Yeah. So, if, if anyone wants, this is going to be your final product, and you're welcome to come up and see that. So it leaves us with a really, really smooth uniform repair that is very, very structural. Now, for our second demonstration, I'm going to, I'm going to go right into our lateral rehabilitation. 